Ooh, 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 ooh. Have you seen? We have had loads of requests for home brewing videos and we're gonna do a nice simple one today, which is a blueberry mead, more specifically a session mead or a hydromel using blueberries from these blueberry bushes that you can see behind me. We'll go through the whole process. We'll show you what we did, how we did it, including some experiments that we did to work out how much blueberry to add a little bit later on in the process. And then of course, there will be a taste test at the end, full of lots of descriptive words. So let's make a start. Mead is made from fermented honey, so we'll need a whole lot of that. I'm using about three and a half kilos here, plus some acids and wine tannin, also some yeast nutrient, yeast, and warm water. Oh, and blueberries. This is a blueberry mead, so we'll need some of those too. We're actually gonna be using it in a couple of different ways, but we'll get to that in due course. The brew day process is really simple and only takes about an hour or so. Most of the time is actually spent cleaning and sanitizing things, which is the first step. We wanna make sure that nothing can infect our mead, make it moldy or taste bad. In terms of the equipment I'm using, there are a couple of specialist things like fermentation buckets and airlocks. I'm also using a whole load of completely unnecessary gadgets that I just like playing with. I've put together a post on our website with all the ingredients, all the equipment and a simple recipe that you can follow. So here I'm using a product called Star Sand, which is a no rinse sanitizer solution. I just mix it up and pour a little bit into the fermentation bucket, give it a swish around to make sure everything is nice and clean and sanitary. Also good to do the lid too. Once that's done, I can empty it out and start filling the bucket with a little bit of warm water. I used my wife's electric canner to heat up the full 20 liters of water that I need to 30 degrees, but you could just use a kettle. Now watching this back, I can see the water looks a bit blue, but it is really just the reflection of the sky. Nothing has been added at this stage. Once everything was clean and sanitary, I added all the honey to some warm water to help it dissolve. And once all the honey was rinsed out of the jars, I topped up the fermenter to 20 liters with more warm water. I then weighed out all of my additives, some malic acid, which is the kind of acid you get in apples, citric acid, the kind you find in lemons, and some powdered wine tannin. But you can use tea bags if you can't get hold of something like this. These additives will help balance the meat out and give it a nice sharpness and mouthfeel. I'm also adding some yeast nutrients, which will help keep the yeast healthy during the fermentation. The yeast will eat the sugar in the honey and turn it into alcohol, but honey doesn't contain everything the yeast need to reproduce and do their thing. I'm using a product called Nutrivit, but another popular option is something called Fermate O or Fermate K, but I can't get a hold of those here in Portugal. I bought all these additives online from a company called Browland, which is a homebrew store in Belgium. With all the honey, water and powders added, I also put in 500 grams of blueberries to the bucket inside of a mesh bag to add some additional flavor and complexity during the fermentation. We'll be adding much more blueberry later on after the primary fermentation is complete, but we'll get to that later. Next, I took a reading to find out how much sugar we're starting with and what the potential ABV of the mead will be. The starting gravity of my batch turned out to be much higher than I'd planned at 1.053, which will give a potential ABV of almost 7%. I've not used this brand of honey before, so it must be a bit sweeter than the one I used last time, but when converting this recipe from my previous batch, I also did my math wrong, and I added over 500 grams more than I should have. Oops. With all the ingredients in, I pitched the yeast. This is an ale yeast that ferments fast at high temperatures and actually has an optimum temperature range of 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. I don't think I'm going to be able to keep it that warm, but room temperature, even during the summer, will be absolutely fine with this yeast. To track the fermentation progress, I'm going to use this weird looking thing. This is a digital floating hydrometer with Wi-Fi that sends data to the cloud about the fermentation, the current gravity, the current temperature, and it will be plotted on a graph to show how the sugar is converted into alcohol over time. This is also a completely optional step, but I do love nerding out about this kind of stuff. Once everything was in the bucket, I put on the lid with an airlock, and this will be kept in the house at around about 24 degrees for the next two weeks. And now we wait.
It's been about two weeks now since brew day, and looking at the graph, I was quite surprised to see how slowly the yeast worked on the honey. I've used this yeast to brew beer before, and it completes primary fermentation in as little as a couple of days, but I guess the sugars in honey are very different to those found in beer. I double-checked that the mead had fermented dry, which it had, giving a final ABV of 6.8%. And then I added potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate to stabilise the brew. This means that any sugars that are added from this point on, in the form of more honey and blueberries, won't ferment. But they will add some much needed sweetness to balance out the drink. Speaking of adding blueberries, I think it's time for a bit of an experiment. Are you ready for some science? <laughs> I was going to say, I think this is like my favourite kind of test. Not like the tests you used to get at school. <laughs> <laughs> you love those kinds of tests too. Oh, no, that's true. So what you have in front of you is a selection of beverages. Mm -hmm. It is dry blueberry mead. The first one on the left in the shot glass is unflavoured. Mm -hmm. All the way and through. then all the way through to increasingly stronger levels of blueberryness. So we're going to say of booze. I was thinking we'll no, start here the, then. No, the booze is is definitely <laughs> there though. So use this as your control, as your sample number one. It smells of vomit. It's a good start. Hmm. It's quite sweet. I wasn't expecting that. It shouldn't be at all it sweet. It doesn't taste of vomit. There's a little bit of sweetness to it, like not dry, but it doesn't taste of blueberries. You don't need to finish it, but you can if you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's got that um, sour tart taste, which I now know is fermented honey, which I didn't used to know, but only because we've done this before. Different recipe, but a mead. I think this is better than the last batch that we did well. without any additives. It smells less of vomit. Yeah, you can start, just start to taste the fruit in that, just. But if you had to say what it was. So that is approximately 0 0.2 grams per 100 ml. Wow, that's not a lot then. But it's a very concentrated syrup. Mm. You can just get it, especially on the, the back end, the finish. Interestingly, I'm going to say that this has more in it than that one. And I can taste that. But I can also taste in this one the honey, the fermented honey more than that one. Oh, that's interesting. It, I mean, some of them may have slightly more sediment than the others. They're all coming mm. from the bottom of the bucket, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that could be why. That, that, you really can't taste it, that one. Is it more funky? Yeah, this is more funky than that one. Okay, interesting. But more fruity. Should be. That had more than double the amount of the first one. Oh, I wouldn't have said it was double in the flavor. Mm -hmm. Almost no smell now. Oh, that's much nicer. That's definitely the nicest of the lot. Okay, I right. was afraid you might say that. <laughs> it smells funky, uh, tastes funky though. Has definitely still has that. Well, it should do. Hmm. It is a fermented beverage. Yeah, I'm just trying to compare the. Yeah, no, do. The amount of funkiness. Yeah, it's much nicer. Still got a funky taste. I wouldn't have said in terms of the fruit there's that much difference between these two. Interesting. So if this has too much or whatever, you could go to that and still get away with it or go somewhere in between. Okay, we could go in between. So this is a concentrated blueberry syrup and it is 200 mils and that would be all of that into our 20 litres of mead. And how much did this cost? I a remember it was expensive. About 20 euros. Yeah, no, that's not worth it. For the difference between that and that, it's not worth it. That's why we do experiments. <laughs> Could you add a little bit of this and then some some of our blueberries and blitz them and try and extract the blueberryness? 
we could do that. Just put it into a pulp bag. Yeah, and so just chuck it in the keg like that. Yeah. Okay, let me try that as well then. Like what you've done before with um, lime skins and things like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. We but have let a me winner. Just, let me just double check. Okay, maybe we don't have a winner. Are you going to double check all the way to finishing both of those? Could be. <laughs> Blueberry sorbet, if you're interested. <laughs> now that is a good colour. added the blueberry puree and back sweetening honey to a sanitized keg with a floating dip tube. This means that all the sediment and the blueberry bits can sink to the bottom and the nice clear liquid can be served from the top. Once all that was transferred, I put the keg in the kegerator for a couple of weeks at 18 psi to get it nice and fizzy, and now the pressure has been dropped down to 10 psi for serving. So let's give it a try. Oh, look at the colour. I've bought you a refreshing beverage, mm. considering it is very warm out here. Does it still smell like vomit? It does have this funky smell. It does. I think we need to research if that's normal or not. It reminds me of a cider, like a farmhousey, mm. funky kind of cider thing. Maybe a still one, maybe a sparkling one. Doesn't taste like cider though. Doesn't taste like cider? No, it's got that funky fermented honey taste. Mm. It's nice though. Oh, cheers. Cheers mm. to another Another oh, successful week. brew. Look how clear that is, mm. that is quite amazing. This has had no filtering, no fining, no gelatin, But you no add loads anything. of stuff into it. Surely one of those does all the... No, no, none of them are for filtering purposes. Oh, okay. This so is what, au naturel, as they say. So what causes it to be so clear? Skill and expertise, of, obviously. Of course, not <laughs> blind luck in the slightest. <clears throat> um, uh, well, one of the things that does help it be clear is in the keg, it's being pulled from the top rather than from the bottom. Oh yeah, we've done that pulling from the bottom before. It doesn't work very well. Well, for most beers it's fine, but for anything that's got fruity things added mm. to it, all the seeds and the pulp and stuff sink down to the bottom. But it this has come out really, really well. Between the keg and the tap, yes. is there not a mesh filter that no. would stop? Oh, no, no, okay. there's no filtration at all. Okay, no. very good. Do we have some descriptive words? I think we've just been... Mm. More rambly than descriptive. So, definitely this fermented, funky... Tartness. <sighs> Tartness. There's some kind of hint of marzipaniness yep. in there. Yeah, I definitely get that. Um, which I don't like marzipan, so that's also part of the whole... It's in the funky category. Um, it's... I don't think it smells anywhere near as funky as it did even a week ago when we first tried it. Or two weeks ago, maybe. Yeah, probably not. I mean, we've definitely had funkier drinks. Mm. Now, it is fruity. Very but fruity. I don't know that I would be able to say even berries, let alone blueberries. I think I would pick berries purely from the colour perspective. Yeah, but I think I'd just go dark fruit. You know, like on a bottle yeah. of wine, you're like, oh, that's got some dark fruits <laughs> in it. Don't know what they are, but yeah. there's some dark fruits in there. <laughs> I, think, I think people would probably guess cherry rather than blueberry. Well, that would match up with the marzipan yeah, exactly. as well. But it is blueberry through mm. and through. You get a, a really nice honey flavor, like on exhaling. On the on uh, the, and mm. yeah, on, on the finish. It's got that honey yep. sweetness rather than like a sugar, just a sugary sweetness. Yeah. <clears throat> and what I do love is being on gas. Mm. 
the bubbles. <clears throat> it's just a touch of bubbles. Yeah. And it makes it so much nicer, I think. Well, it's worth saying that this is this is not a traditional mead, which normally is still and normally mm. is even more boozy. But this is a hydromel or a session mead, so mm. it's uh, sparkling, lower ABV, although this is dangerously drinkable at 6.8%. And I think you should work on making this so it's not that much. So like 4% yeah. would be good. <clears throat> I completely agree. Because then yeah. you can have we just more added of them. too much honey. Uh, okay, yeah. but you could have counted that by adding more water later or not? Could add more water or less honey, yeah. Mm. Um, so the recipe that I've put together on the website, I've actually tweaked it a little bit based on this experience. It's got less honey, which will make it cheaper and less boozy. And it doesn't have the whole kegging part because most people don't have a kegging system. So the recipe that I've done on the website is for bottle conditioning. So it uses less equipment. There's one extra ingredient, but two fewer ingredients from what we did. Uh, so go and check that out if you want to make something similar. One extra, but one less. One so there's one additional, less. which is different, and there's two that we use that you don't need. You don't need. need. Yeah. Okay, got it. So if that didn't make any sense, just go to the website and check it out. And uh, <laughs> all will be revealed. Something else that we should mention is the price, because mm. we often like to talk about how much yeah. our projects cost us. In total, this batch is about 40 euros. So 40 euros for so that, 20 litres, 19 litres. Does that cover the cost of the syrup? The syrup, the, the honey, the the blueberries were mostly free because well, they, they were from our bushes. We went and picked some of them as we well. We did pick some, but they were all in the freezer together, so I don't know oh, whose okay. was whose and what was what. How much did you use? Uh, a kilo of blueberries. Yeah, I don't think we pull, took a kilo off our plants. No, maybe not. So that's probably another five euros. The yeast is a bit less than five euros, so like 360, something like that. Uh, all the powders and stuff like that, that you, you use such a small amount of them, it's like one gram here, three grams there. Um, so you can buy those and then have them for many future brews. So I haven't really included that, but 40 euros plus or minus. So let's, let's round it up to 50, including okay, all the fine. other bits and pieces. So if you round it up to 50 liters, uh, sorry, 50 euros, and let's say 20 liters, yeah. then it comes in at 250 per liter. I will have to use a calculator to confirm or deny if that's true, <laughs> because my math is terrible, it's, as we learned earlier. It's correct. <laughs> that's one of the reasons it's so boozy. Um, but yeah, 250 a litre. Compared to a batch of beer, which is usually half the price of that, yeah. much, much cheaper. But if you have to go and buy, let's call it a cider, because you can't really buy mead in the pub, a pint or a litre of cider at your local bar or supermarket, much you are going to pay a lot more than yeah, 250 much more than that. Um, so, there still half the price, at least half the price of what you would pay if you weren't brewing it yourself. Absolutely, and and all the fun that yeah. comes with it. So we have been a little bit cheeky. Have we? Uh, we have drank almost half of the keg of this already. <laughs> we had Over to, some time. We had to do multiple taste testings <laughs> until it got yep. to being ready like this. And we are always a little bit impatient. <laughs> Impatient is uh, very much the correct word. Because it is stronger than planned, and because we've got half a keg space now, I think I might put some more blueberry puree in with a bit of water yeah. to let it down a bit. Stretch it out a bit. And stretch it out a bit. That's a good um, idea, because then I could have more drinks. <laughs> That's not really the point. For the same buzz. <laughs> and the buzz is too much, so the last, yeah. what was the last one you did, 6% as well? Yeah, the last one and was And sometimes I would have just one glass, and I was like, Jeepers creepers, I feel drunk. <laughs> I mean, clearly I wasn't, but one no. glass of it, you yeah. couldn't really go back for another one because it was too strong. Yeah, it's supposed um, to be a sessionable session. Yeah, need, but it's so not. You I, can't at 7%. I can only have two of these and then I'm like, yeah, i got to go have a nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of which, I think it's time for a nap <laughs> right. or at least time to wrap oh, this up. It's so hot. It's so stinking hot. And I have to go and edit this video as well. Well, so. then I better have that. <laughs> okay, well... Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye bye. Now give me my mead back. But you can't edit drunk. It might be funnier that way. <laughs>